Hey everybody, I'm Joey and take a look at these steaks. Right here I have two ribeyes, but they're different. This one is beef and this one is bison. We're gonna cook these babies up and then my favorite part, share the results with you. So follow me and let's turn up the tasty. All right, so I'm really excited about this test. I've actually never had a bison ribeye. I've had bison burgers, but never the ribeye. Also, this is not really uh, an experiment to test which is the best. This is a prime grade beef ribeye, so I already know it's gonna be excellent. This video is really about testing for those differences, those flavor profile differences, and sharing those results at home with you guys. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that these steaks have already been salted. Why? Well, because we recently did an experiment and we determined that if you salt your steaks at least an hour before cooking, it helps turn up the tasty. I wanna talk about the ribeye here for just a little bit. One of the things I wanna point out is that these are very similar looking cuts, even though they come from different animals. The one thing I'm really impressed about here is that these are very well trimmed steaks. A lot of times, when you buy ribeyes at the store, it comes with all this additional fat cap that goes, oh, around the exterior here. It's typically an edible, and what it really is is the market driving up its weight on the steak that you're buying. I really wanna take a moment and thank my friends at meatandbone.com for sending me these steaks. If you're interested in trying it out for yourself, we've included a link in the description below. And I'm just really impressed with how well trimmed this beef ribeye is, that's my best comparable because I've had these before. And I just have to assume the same is true for the bison. Now, one quick note about the ribeyes. They both have what we call the spinalis. That's the ribeye cap. It's often the most flavorful and tender, most desired part of any ribeye steak. It has all that great intermuscular fat, which just adds a lot of flavor. Now, it's time to turn up the heat and cook this meat. All right, so we're gonna get these steaks cooking right here in this cast iron skillet. Why am I using a cast iron skillet? Well, it delivers a nice, consistent, even heat throughout the cooking process. I know from my experience cooking bison burgers that bison can be a lean cut of meat, and we don't wanna risk overcooking it. It will be dry and just not a good steak. So I don't wanna take this bison any higher than a medium rare temperature. Also, I wanna address why we didn't use any other seasonings. Why salt only? Well, it's because I want to be able to isolate the true flavor of each steak so I can share authentic results with you guys at home. I don't want any other flavor profiles getting in the way. We're gonna get the skillet nice and hot and we're gonna season it with uh, a little bit of avocado oil. Why that? Well, we've done experiments there too, and we just are really impressed with the results that avocado oil produces because it has a very high smoke point. So let's turn up the heat. While we're waiting for the skillet to get nice and hot, I just want to point out the salt. It was very heavily present when we first dropped it on the steaks, but what happens is that initially it brings the moisture out of the steak, but after time, that begins to reabsorb into the steak and gives it a nice balanced salt all throughout each bite. Just wanted to kind of share that. Now, the other thing that you'll see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the salt that's on the fat cap doesn't absorb at all. That does not penetrate in the same way. Now that we got the pan going nice and hot, you can see some smoke coming off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some of this avocado oil. There is some debate about whether you oil the pan or oil the steak. I've always oiled the pan. Might be a future experiment. We try. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on, or in rather. I'm just gonna pick it up, let it get all the way around the pan. 
Now I wanna address the myth of a ripping hot pan. I've heated this up to a medium high heat, not as high as it goes. I find that sometimes that just overcooks the exterior of the steak. So this is a medium high heat. Um, because our beef ribeye is just a tad thicker than our bison ribeye, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that first. I love that sound. It's the sound of tasty. Next, here we go with the bison. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these things cook for about two minutes on each side, and then I'm gonna gauge the internal temperature. I'm also gonna switch out this cutting board. Okay, so these steaks are finished cooking. They've been resting here for five minutes. We pulled both steaks at an internal temperature of 125 degrees. The bison steak took about five minutes and the beef ribeye took about six minutes. It was just a little bit thicker. So now here's one of my favorite parts. Let's cut it open and see how it looks. We'll just go right through the middle here. That, we got some nice color right there. Nice medium rare, just what we were shooting for. And now let's take a look at this bison. Again, that's a great looking color. That's just what we want on the bison. Again, it is much leaner meat, and so we don't want it drying out. All right, so before I actually do the taste test, I just want to kind of point out just one difference I'm seeing. It looks like the beef ribeye has just a slightly better crust on it than the bison. I think that probably has to do with the fact that this is prime steak, which means it's heavily marbled, a lot of fat in there. I think some of that fat helped bring up the crust a little bit, but it's really a negligible difference. I really just kind of want to share that small point with you. So now it's time for my favorite part. But before I bite in and taste test these, many people have pointed out that I need to cleanse my palate in between each bite. I'm gonna grab a beer. Sorry for the suspense, guys. Wanna make sure I'm doing this experiment right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try this prime steak. Guys, this is a steak I'm used to. I mean, prime beef is just so good. And then when you mix that in with it, with the uh, ribeye being just a, having a lot of fat on it, it's a really rich cut of meat. And I've noticed this with Wagyu meat too, which is even more marbled than prime beef, is that all that fat can add a lot of richness. I often find that I can't eat as much of a prime steak or a Wagyu beef because of all that richness, all that fat, and it's creating a lot of flavor, a lot of great umami flavor. So, let's cleanse the palate. All right, next up, let's try this bison. A little bit of a fat cap over here. Wow. I'll tell you, I would have absolutely no idea that this was bison. I would have no clue that it is not a t traditional beef steak. Some of the things I'm picking up on this is it has a really nice chew to it. Again, it's a ribeye. I don't know if bison comes in grades. Actually, if you guys know at home, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. It has a, a great bite. The one thing that's sticking out is it's just not as rich as this steak over here. Now that could be an excellent thing, especially if you're looking to monitor your fat intake. That's I know that's one of the reasons people love eating bison. Also, there's another component to it in that bison are 
almost always raised free range, you know, eating throughout the prairie. I think that's a, another thing. I want to go in for another bite. Just make sure I'm giving you guys an honest, authentic review, and it's pretty damn good as well. Get that salt coming through end to end on each bite. If I'm, if I'm really trying to stretch here, there might be a little additional sweetness. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to distinguish between a richness and a sweetness, but I finding this to have just a slighter, sweeter flavor. So this steak was just incredible. A lot of people have contacted me and told me that I should add more game meats to our channel. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to feature this. If you guys are looking to try this out, you can get yours today from meatandbone.com. As I mentioned, there's a link in the description below. Hey, while you're down there, you know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that big thumbs up like button, or even better, subscribe to our channel so you can keep learning how to cook meat made easy. We release a new video every single week. Look, I'm gonna get back to these two delicious steaks, and I'll see you guys next time.